Obesity is the most common cause of gastroesophageal reflux. Other conditions associated with GERD include a sliding type hiatal hernia, pregnancy, delayed gastric emptying, and scleroderma. A helicobacter pylori infection, however, is not associated with GERD, so screening patients with GERD for a helicobacter pylori infection is not recommended. GERD is characterized by regurgitation, pyrosis, also known as heartburn, and an acidic taste in the mouth. Heartburn is a retrosternal burning sensation that can radiate to the back, neck, jaw, or arms. Clearly, the discomfort caused by heartburn can be similar to that which is experienced by some patients with coronary artery disease. To complicate the matter, some patients with coronary artery disease improve with antacid therapy. So to prevent mistaking an acute coronary syndrome for GERD, cardiac disease must be ruled out when chest discomfort is a presenting symptom, even if it is presumed to be due to reflux. Aspiration and vagal stimulation may cause a dry and non-productive cough, which in some patients may be the only complaint. A high index of suspicion is required to make a timely diagnosis in such patients with an atypical presentation. The spectrum of manifestations caused by GERD is really broad. Some other symptoms include water brash, which refers to episodes of excessive salivation that cause a rush of saliva in the mouth, globus, a sensation of fullness in the throat, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, odynophagia, painful swallowing, chronic sore throat, hoarseness due to vocal cord irritation, which is usually worse in the morning, wheezing, and dyspnea. Patients with difficulty or painful swallowing need further workup to rule out complications. A presumptive diagnosis can be made if typical symptoms are present at least two times a week for at least four weeks. If the patient is younger than 50 years of age and no alarm findings are present, then a therapeutic trial with lifestyle modifications and proton pump inhibitor therapy can be attempted. A negative therapeutic trial does not rule out GERD, nor does a positive trial confirm it. Nonetheless, in a typical case without alarm findings, there is no role for upper endoscopy, manometry, esophageal pH impotence studies, or barium swallow. If alarm findings are present, then order an upper endoscopy. Biopsy, however, is not needed to make the diagnosis of GERD. The barium study in particular is a low-yield investigation in uncomplicated GERD. It is usually only indicated when evaluating dysphagia or fancy reflux surgery is being considered. If the patient has sustained relief of symptoms for 2-3 to three months, then a trial of medication withdrawal can be attempted. While attempting the medication withdrawal, histamine 2 receptor blockers can be prescribed as step-down therapy. If symptoms return, however, then PPI therapy will need to be recommenced. Some complications of GERD include enamel erosion, stricture, gastrointestinal hemorrhage, Barrett's esophagus, and esophageal adenocarcinoma.